to know. I had the biggest underwater drone fleet in the Navy. You? So, yes. Yeah. That over 120 and there's more. What so, do they look like? So there's, there's this, this is kind of my, this is my business right now. I'm a okay. tech consultant for underwater, mostly ocean technology, but space too. Okay. And uh, I've advised a whole bunch of ocean drone companies, surface, undersea, and there's a whole range of types. The types I owned were oceanographic. So they were long endurance. They're called gliders. Uh, so they don't, they have a thing called buoyancy propulsion where they use an air bladder to change basically the buoyancy so it goes up and down and you throw some wings on it there uh Ooh, whoa that thing's spooky oh, so looking. that's that's an article i wrote that's pretty cool that is the manta a darpa developed dr ocean drone yeah darpa developed ocean drone. that's right yeah oh my god yeah. that is a badass looking drone i again i don't think it's operational but i'd like it to be <laughs> so wow yeah but uh, uh, and the other p pieces uh, is a uh, paper or uh, uh, article I wrote on uh, ocean drones. A revolution. We're, we're turning into the aliens ourselves. I know exactly right. That's the interesting conversion. We, we're not. Are we the origins of all these NHIs? Uh, and we're just seeing our I relatives. I think so. I think we are. I think so. That's my favorite hypothesis out of all of them. Is the time traveler one. I think that's the most compelling one. I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of a lot of people to try to debunk it, and there's a lot of. Uh, questionable holes in it but um god damn you know just with like the history of of human beings and our evolution and like the way we're going is like dropping sperm counts dropping testosterone fertility rate dropping off a cliff and uh are you familiar with michael masters his, yeah. his extra tempestrial mm -hmm. hypothesis like if you look at all the abduction accounts of taking sperm and eggs from people if there was some sort of cataclysm in the future they would want to come back in time to replenish their population in the future with sperms and eggs of people in the past. And you goddamn, know, that's interesting. <laughs> I, I, heck yeah. And, and I, I tell you, my wife and I, we both are into this topic together mm -hmm. and uh, it's an interesting journey we've been on and uh, I can tell you how it started, but quickly, we would have thought uh, two years ago, this is all a bunch of BS, you know, mm -hmm. abductions and all this, but man, now that we've met abductees, and we've read John Mack's book, by the way, uh, which is yeah. really heavy, and The Communion by Whitley Strieber. Oh, we've yeah. met him. Uh, I and then I've they're they're documenting all. So when Whitley wrote the book, he got all these letters, and they're all they're all housed by people who said they had the same experience, and they're all housed at this place called the Archive of the Impossible at Rice University. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the the director of that is Jeffrey Kripal, Doctor Kripal, mm -hmm. who's another interesting guy you might want to have on your show. Mm -hmm. uh, here. Great guy. And I actually, let's follow up after this. All these people I recommended, I'm, I'm personally in touch with. And yeah. if I say, you should go on Danny's show, they'll, they'll <laughs> probably go on your show. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, Jeffrey's amazing. I love him. Yeah. Um. So back to your drones. I want to see your drones. You're, 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 you're a consultant for tech companies that are developing these underwater drones. Are these them? Look for Ocean Glider, Steve. Ocean Glider. Okay. What is the purpose of these drones? What are they, what's their it, function? It's oceanography. So long, okay. long endurance, uh, sensing of the ocean okay and it's really relevant so i had 120 of these a big fleet always out uh that that was that's one right there um oh cool like torpedoes yeah that's what they look like and see that big the, the antenna at the end what they do is they do a basically a zigzag up and down the water column uh so change the buoyancy you have two wings so that allows forward propulsion mm -hmm. with the seawater hydrodynamics and and once they once they make a down and up profile the antenna pops on the surface and sends the signal up by SATCOM and, and all gets fed into our ocean models, which are used by uh, surface forces doing undersea warfare or, or anti-submarine warfare. Mm. So you have to know, just like weather and, and its impacts on radar and visual satellite communication imaging, the ocean has weather. Yes. And so, you know, this your surfer. So currents, uh, sea state, right. salinity differences all affect the speed of sound. So there are areas of the ocean Steve, that are, these are all China ones. Can yeah, you find, can you find his? Find the American one. <laughs> God, it's a uh, look at Naval Oceanographic. What's office. the name of your company again? Uh, look at the Naval Oceanographic Office. Okay, this is, Naval what, Oceanographic Office. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's funny. Uh, ultimately, there's a story there. So when I had that fleet of ocean drones and, and we had brought the head of the Navy, Chief of Naval Operations, John Richardson, to see them all, and he, he said, great, you should be doing this. We need to do more autonomy. Um, a short time after that, 2015 or so, you might have heard the news, maybe it was 2016, when China 
seized one of our ocean drones. Do you remember that? I do remember yes. that. Yes, and Trump even tweeted about it. Yes. And some, I forgot what he tweeted and said, but but that got the news, right? And and what happened, it was interesting. Um, the, uh, I I never got, that, that's good. There you go. Uh, that's exactly what we're talking about. And so uh, I never got a call saying, by anybody in my chain of command, what are you doing? You know, why'd you put your drone out there? They wanted us to be doing that. So they actually screwed up. And we use that to basically uh, highlight all their negative and malign activity in the Pacific. And so we got a lot of good press out of that. And, and they, they quickly returned it to us. And what we get, we think is that it was a lower level com commander of a ship who saw it surface and thought, oh, we should get this. This will be a prize, you know, the, the leadership of the Communist Party will be so pleased. And of course, it was an international incident mm -hmm. and made them look really bad. So they, so I, I it was- And uh, it was designed that way. Uh, no, I, I, what I'm saying is I think they screwed up. I don't think, they made China look bad, not us. Right, but we we, we intended for them to- Not, not really, oh, okay, oh, no. Okay. So I, it was just doing its job. I see. I, I, we didn't throw it out. Now, partially because it was in the South China Sea. And that's an area that we want to know the ocean really well, because if China, if Taiwan is going to get invaded, we're going to have to put yeah. our submarine forces and special uh, operations forces there to keep that block, keep that, that, um, that blockade from happening. Have you heard of that base called um, Diego Garcia? Yes, of course. What's, what is that place all about? The place looks crazy. Well, it's, it's a- uh, Pull up a photo of Diego Garcia. It's where we. It's a strategic base, right in the middle of the Indian Ocean. I've so. heard. Of, I've heard people call it the Area Fifty One of the Indian Ocean. I don't know anything about that. So <laughs> sure, Tim. No, no. I, I'll be honest with you, because <laughs> if there was something I couldn't say, I'd tell you. Okay. I would. I'd be on. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, it's 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 a strategic asset. I think we based long range bombers there uh, at okay. different times. And in fact, if I recall, yeah. So I find like a real like a satellite photo of it. There you go. Look at that crazy so they pull submarines inside there like it's like it's a perfect little like a circular island that you can like park ships inside of so they're safe so those are called atolls atolls right okay. and and they're formed when a let's say an island or a kind of volcanic formed island uh starts to subside geologically and the fringing reef around that island continues to build up over time mm. yeah, it takes millennia but uh there's, we did all the nuclear tests at atolls, right? Like we did. Bikini, Bikini Atoll. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And they're perfect because it's like a safe haven from the from the um, from the ocean. That's right. Now, these are great bases, of course. And the, that's why the Japanese seized them all in the Pacific <laughs> at right. the outset of World War II. They they had a, a lot of value, and then we went and retook them. So they're they're yeah. This is a very a, valuable asset. What a crazy place to be stationed too. Yeah, I have a good buddy. Uh, he's in my book, actually, because he's a mentor of mine. His name was Admiral Tim McGee, and he was stationed there for a while and a surfer like you uh -huh. and uh, sur surfed a lot there during that tour. Uh, on the atoll? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Same with, I don't know if you've ever been to Guam. No. Especially when you got a typhoon out there. Guam can have some good surf. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, for sure. I've seen it. Dang, man. Yeah, the Pacific Islands, for sure. And, and great, great scuba diving. Oh, I bet. I bet it's probably incredible there. <laughs>